Welcome, folks, to At Ease. It's a virtual conversation about veterans' benefits. I'm Carver County Commissioner Randy Malerchnik, and I happen to be a U.S. Army veteran. We have the pleasure today to speak with another Army veteran, Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs Commissioner Larry Herkey. Welcome, Commissioner, and thanks for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, thank you very much, Commissioner Malerchnik. This is uh, Commissioner Larry Herkey, I've been uh, Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs for about a year and a half in Minnesota as a sustainability officer for the state as an enterprise for about two and a half years. And prior to that, I spent about 31 years in the uh, both the Army and Army National Guard, uh, retiring in 2016 as, uh, co as a colonel. Um, Enjoying uh, that retirement now and moving on to spending time with veterans and vet veterans issues and uh, really enjoyed the job and it's been a great experience uh, for the last uh, about 18 to 20 months. All right, great. Well, thank you, Larry. You know, during today's brief discussion, we'll be sharing information on basic veteran benefits. While we got a lot to cover today, you may have questions yourself, which can be written in the chat box below or emailed to VSO, that's Victor Sierra Oscar at co.carver.mn.us. Once again, that email is VSO, which is Victor Sierra Oscar for you military types, at co.carver.mn.us. If you have a question and it's relevant to the discussion, we'll try to bring it up during the program if we have time. But uh, we will respond to all questions later if you, of course, include your email or phone number with your question. Well, Commissioner, back to you. What does it mean to be a veteran in the state of Minnesota? Well, that uh, Commissioner is very, uh, very well uh, prescribed in Minnesota Statute 197.447. And that defines uh, four ways that you can be a veteran under Minnesota law. The first is if you've been separated under honorable conditions from any branch of the armed forces of the United States after, after having served on active duty for 181 consecutive days. And that's, uh, that's important there is the 181 consecutive days. The second reason is by reason of disability incurred while serving on active duty. The third way that you could be a Minnesota vet veteran under statute is someone ha who has the minimum active duty requirement as defined by the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 38, Section 3.12a. And there's the fourth way of uh, becoming a veteran in Minnesota law is one who served on military, active military service and is certified by the United States Secretary of Defense as an active military service and a discharge under honorable conditions that also must be issued by the secretary. So those are the four ways you can be a, you can be a veteran under Minnesota law. Right, uh, thank you, Commissioner. What I'm hearing is that there are multiple ways that you can be considered a veteran. If you've worn a uniform and served in the United States military, but you're not sure of your veteran status, Please contact your county veteran service officer or CVO to find the we also the acronym is CVSO for County Veteran Service Officer to find what benefits and programs you may be eligible to receive. To find your CVSO, visit www.macvso.org. Once again, that's www. M-A-C-V-S-O dot org. And that's up on your screen right now, folks. Or you can call 1-888-888-LINK-VET. All right, Commissioner, let's see. What else? What's next on our agenda? <laughs> well, I think the next question is for you, Commissioner. It's uh, uh, an important topic for all of us. It's our VA health care. And uh, what if a veteran has not used their VA health care in the past, but is trying now, trying it now, uh, how can uh, VA health care help and assist them in their care plan? Uh, thanks for the question, Commissioner. It's a good one. 
Uh, some of you know, in a previous life, I worked for a congressman doing uh, veterans and military liaison work. So I often worked with the VA medical centers here in Minnesota in different capacities. VA healthcare is a really an amazing benefit for our veterans. In Minnesota, we're really blessed to have many excellent facilities, including, of course, the VA Medical Center at Minneapolis, the one at St. Cloud, we have one at Fargo, and in Sioux Falls. Also, there are many outstanding veteran hospitals, and there are many VA clinics, or what we refer to as CBOX for veterans as well. CBOX is community-based outpatient care, and those are, those are in the communities so that the veterans can get primary care there. Then if they need more, um, more detailed work or other uh, prescriptive work, then they can go to the medical centers for that. But again, primary uh, care reduces the cost to the taxpayers and provides better services to our veterans. I was proud to be part of the original legislation and worked on that for CBOX, and uh, that's a very good service for our veterans. The VA Healthcare um, can serve veterans in a wide variety of ways, including, of course, prescription drugs, eyeglasses, hearing aids, mental health, podiatry, and many other important areas. One misconception about VA healthcare is that you won't be able to continue to see your private doctor. This isn't true any longer. The VA has a program now that it, you can participate in that's called co-managed care. And you have the opportunity as a veteran to see both. Don't forget that the VA also offers a full range of services at the women clinics located both at Minneapolis and St. Cloud. Again, I was proud to be involved with that uh, in the 90s to make sure that we have those clinics. And uh, the VA was a little slow at coming along with, back in the old days, the older days of uh, serving our women veterans and understanding their problems and concerns. But now the VA is up to par and uh, doing a fine job in that area. So we want to encourage women veterans to, uh, to use the VA medical uh, facilities. In some cases, the VA offers extended care for veterans and uh, that who need personal care services. The VA health care is a benefit that veterans can use their entire life, but they need to be enrolled in the VA health care system in order to take advantage of these benefits. And Randy, um, I use uh, the uh, St. Cloud uh, mm -hmm. Medical Clinic, and it, they do a wonderful job there. And I would uh, indicate anybody that's interested, uh, go ahead and try to pursue uh, becoming uh, part of the VA health system. And one of the best ways to enroll in the VA health care is by contacting your county office officer or CVSO and work with them to submit an enrollment application. To find your CVSO, you can uh, visit www.maccvso at org or dot org. Or again, you can call 1 888 LinkVet. And uh, link, 1 888 LinkVet is our sort of go, all, go for information place for the Department of, Mil of Veterans Affairs. And uh, it's a great place to go for any information that you need concerning um, any veteran service. Okay, thank you again, Commissioner. Good information. Uh, you know, uh, the little tough uh, conversation we're gonna have next, uh, but I know you're active in this. September is uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Would you like to talk a little bit about, as a commissioner, what the Department of Veterans Affairs in Minnesota has done to address, of course, this troublesome health crisis. Well, this is an area that the Department of Veterans Affairs previously had not been significantly involved with. And I think it's long overdue that we've, uh, we've uh, now moved towards a very active involvement in this area. You may or may not know that there is a crisis throughout the country. We lose, um, we're losing thousands of veterans each year uh, to suicide uh, throughout the nation. In Minnesota alone, we, lo we lose over 100 uh, veterans each year, and that's from 2014 to 2018. Um, I think the actual number, we've been reviewing it with Department of Defense and some others, and, and the actual number is probably even higher than that. Um, the governor, who is a veteran, has asked 
asked uh, the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs to step in and to take an active role in here in this. And uh, we know that suicide is preventable. That's been proven. And it's the goal of uh, our department, the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs, uh, to uh, become a priority along with the federal VA, which uh, I just got off a phone call with uh, Secretary Wilkie the other day, and he indicated that this is task number one for the federal VA. But our, our job is to partner with the state agencies that have been working on this for quite a while, the Department of Health, human services and also agriculture uh, because uh, suicide amongst farmers is a is quite an issue also so we're all working together on this problem and earlier this year we actually joined a national effort uh, called the governor's challenge and this is a program that's actually sponsored by the federal va and the substance abuse mental health services administration we're working with other states and cities, I think there's about 28 uh, total right now. They're in either the mayor's challenge or the governor's challenge. And we're trying to help uh, to help each other actually develop and execute plans that includes both uh, federal, state, uh, military, and nonprofit organizations working together and other healthcare systems. Uh, this, these would be private healthcare systems working towards preventing uh, suicide in general, but specifically for us, veteran suicide. The plan that we're putting together, we're working on right now, uh, calls for a public health approach, which means that everyone in the community feels responsible for suicide prevention and everyone, everyone's part of the solution is what I say is going forward. So it's sort of an all hands on deck type effort. Uh, we're encouraging Minnesota, Minnesotans across the state to take suicide prevention training, such as uh, QRP, which is question, per se, per se, persuade, and refer, or the other one, other training is SAVE, S-A-V-E, which is signs, ask, validate, encourage, or expedite care. And we... Uh, the importance of this is to recognize the veterans when they're at risk and to get people more comfortable in talking to someone struggling with m mental health issues. Uh, there's lots of places uh, that you can go to. The, I think the two different uh, training uh, areas, if you were to uh, go on the internet and look those up, uh, most of the training is, is free and open to the public. But if you want to learn more, you can visit our website at minnesotaveteran.org forward slash in that suicide and that's all together i'll say that one more time minnesota veteran together those two words dot org forward slash in vet suicide and uh, if you go there you can get more information and also links to other other locations to include the training that we discussed earlier Every citizen can also take the PREVENTS pledge, which is to commit to taking training, talking about mental health issues, and checking on veterans in their, in their lives and in the communities where they're living. If you want to take that pledge, you can go to wearewithinreach.net. And again, that's wearewithinreach.net. And... Um, Mental health care is available for both the VA and through the MDVA, our Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs core program, which is supported by Lutheran Social Services. Uh, the program offers sessions to veterans and their dependents on a number of different areas to include mental health, financial co coaching, and mental counseling. To utilize core, it's pretty easy. You can contact your county veteran service officer, our CVSO, and you can see if you qualify for this important service. Uh, the most important thing I think about uh, suicide prevention is that if you need help, you need to ask. And asking is okay. And I need you to know that the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs is here if you're a veteran to help you out. And uh, we can do that um, in many different ways, but you just need to ask for help. And uh, with that, Randy, I'll give it back to you. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, 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 we're a little late coming to the game, I think, in this country with the Vietnam veterans and not understanding the problems that they and their families were having. And uh, we're just kind of realizing or it's been a, 
a couple of years now that we understand that we lost a lot of our Vietnam veterans to uh, suicide and none of us were really tracking that. And uh, so I'm glad now that we're paying closer attention that, to that issue. And there are many resources out there, folks. And uh, sometimes it really does take someone to steer veterans to the right place. So please don't be embarrassed about that. And uh, it, it's just a gentle hand on the, uh, on the shoulder and, uh, and a kind word. And, you can help them uh, help them get to where they can uh, at least begin to get some help. Uh, Commissioner, next subject uh, there's been a priority set to uh, end veteran homelessness in our state of Minnesota. And I wonder if you could walk us through uh, what the uh, your department has done to achieve some of the set goals. Well, thank you very very much and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. I'm very proud of the work that uh, that uh, staff and we're, we're working with about 45 different uh, uh, team members that are working with us and they're from everywhere inside of government, outside of government, nonprofits, um, just a whole group of people working on on this and and we are we are constantly meeting to uh, bring individuals working individual cases for uh, finding safe, secure housing for our veterans. Um, the governor who is a veteran himself has uh, indicated that uh, he wants to be the fourth state in the country to end veterans homelessness. And uh, that's, there's a very specific way to do that. Uh, you have to take each region of the state and, and they have to become what's called functional zero. And it has to be validated by the federal government Government. And uh, right now we're about halfway there. We continue to work hard on this. Uh, in fact, in 2019, we housed approximately 550 veterans. This is the most we've ever been able to in one year. Uh, in total, since we've been uh, working on this so for about uh, just about 10 years now, uh, we've housed a total of 1,943. Uh, I'm sorry, in the last seven years, we've actually uh, uh, housed those number, number of people. As you can see, our numbers continue to go up, uh, but we find more and more veterans are in need of, of uh, safe, secure housing. Um, so we're um, working many collaborative effort, efforts to include our nonprofit partners, including uh, MACV, the Federal VA, the Minnesota Department of Human Services, and also the Department of Housing. And we've worked together to uh, house, to identify and house uh, homeless veterans using what we call the, is the Veterans Registry. And that allows us to track the status of and the needs of each veteran. And not only the voucher or whatever we can do to help them to, uh, to afford housing, but also to find the housing itself. So this is very detailed work. Uh, there continues to be a shortage of affordable housing, and we're always seeking landlords that are willing to open their doors to homeless veterans. And the uh, fierce veteran, uh, you can go on to our website at uh, Minnesota Veteran, and uh, there is a place that you can actually sign up and, and help us out with that. But we have many incentives that are there to support our landlords during this process. And, uh, very proud of what we've done and what we've, we have uh, currently today about 273 veterans that are currently home and working to one of them to one, try to a housing solution. And uh, again, this is, this is uh, very detailed work and there's lots of people helping out with it, but uh, we're, we're very happy with the progress we've made so far. And we're, trying to get to be that fourth uh, country homelessness in their state. That's a uh, great commissioner, uh, kind of a side story. I think you recall, uh, it was maybe about two years ago. This is such an important issue with you and the governor and the department that I was meeting with you and occasionally I get long winded and uh, like to sit there and talk to, especially when I have a gentleman uh, that uh, I have your ear with uh, that somebody that's important to uh, the veterans in my county. And you had to excuse yourself to go meet with the uh, landlord. So uh, I'm unaware of uh, uh, a commissioner at the Department of Veterans Affairs ever uh, before you that uh, actually went out and met with landlords and tried to help them 
uh, be able to make their housing available to our veterans. So I thank you for that effort. And I was very excited that day to see that that was a true and honest uh, effort and priority on, on your part. One of the examples of a collaboration is right here in Carver County, and we work with MACV uh, this past January to establish a veterans transitional housing in Chaska. It's a great partnership. MACV handles the uh, support part of the housing and our local community development authority. They run the building and the maintenance and make sure everything's right in the housing facility. And then MACV is there to make sure that our veterans and their families are supported as they should be. I need to thank you, Commissioner, because you came there for our dedication last January. Not only that, that last fall, you were out here in Carver County in Chaska where we had a uh, sleep sleep out to uh, help people um, bring more, uh, more uh, attention to the homeless uh, issue and you spoke at that. So I appreciate you coming out to Carver County and uh, a lot of people sometimes wanna say, well, you folks just hang out in St. Paul. Well, that's not true for you and your staff. They're out and about and we see them everywhere. Uh, on this uh, homeless prevention resources, the best, best thing to do as the commissioner knows is uh, not to let them become homeless at all. So there's a lot of programs that we can that, that prevent homelessness and uh, your counties have these programs and I know that you have them there at the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Anyone needs homeless prevention resources, be sure to contact 1-888-LINK-VET. Once again, that's 1-888-LINK-VET to be added to the homeless registry. The Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs has recently announced, as I understand, Commissioner, some grants available for veterans and their military families that could possibly help them out financially if they've been adversely affected by the COVID-19 virus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That, Randy, that is very true. Um, and this is, uh, this is especially important today as uh, people are having challenges with their income, whether it's the income of the veteran themselves or maybe it's a spouse. Um, what I wanted to do is try to get uh, some direct support into the veterans' hands. And I can tell you that government sometimes does not work very fast, but this is the fastest thing I've ever seen happen in my lifetime <laughs> in government. Uh, if, from the day we uh, came up with the concept to the day that it was the first, we received the first application for COVID-19 uh, veterans grants, it was actually 31 days. And uh, I'll tell you, that is, that is a, definitely a record. Uh, the legislature was gracious and allocated uh, $6.2 million to provide aid to veterans who have been financially affected by COVID-19. And we started our process by offering two different grants. And these grants are still available right now. And you can, you can apply for both of them uh, if you've uh, been financially affected by COVID-19. The first grant is the Disaster Relief Grant, which provides up to $1,000 to mitigate the negative effects and the economic impact of COVID-19. And that grant itself can actually go right to a um, Minnesota veteran, uh, our website, and we, you can apply for it there. Uh, the second grant is a special needs grant, which is a one-time financial assistance that's paid directly to the vendor, creditor, such as paying your rent or mortgage. Could be a utility bill or an auto insurance or a medical bill, or it could be you need some help uh, fixing, fixing the furnace. Uh, that's a direct grant. Uh, that grant itself uh, was up to 3,500. And again, that's a one-time one uh, grant for that special needs grant. The disaster relief, again, I said you get directly to the website or a special needs grant is through your county veteran service officer. Actually, your CVSO can help you with both of them. If you need help with it, just go see your CVSO. And we've just introduced a third grant that's actually been approved by the governor's office, and that's a distance learning support grant of up to $3,000. And this is specifically to help mitigate the negative impact of a family experience by implementing their school district's distance learning or hybrid learning plans. So this would, this would be uh, maybe you need to buy a computer, maybe you need to uh, um, create, you know, get some type of, uh, uh, way to communicate that you didn't have before uh, could be uh, 
additional expenses that are related to um, making sure that your your uh, student or your son or daughter uh, can go to school and meet the requirements for either distance learning or hybrid learning. And um, for this grant, you have to go through your County Veteran Service Officer or CBSO, and they'll help you to apply for these grants. They've been trained and they know how to do all three of the grants. So you can go see your CBSO and they can help you. But if you like more information, you can check out the details that are on our website at minnesotaveteran.org forward slash COVID relief. Again, minnesotaveteran.org forward slash COVID relief. Thanks, Commissioner. And with that, uh, Randy, we'll go back to you again. Thank you so much. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I can just tell by working in the communities, I know that Dan and myself, that uh, you folks are really doing a good job at assessing what the needs of the veterans are. And you're listening to the folks that uh, work on the front lines too, which you, you're you very good at down there at the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. And so just as a matter of fact, uh, we find uh, some of our veterans here in Carver County qualifying. We have over 50 veterans who receive their, those grants and we're very appreciative that those exist and you know, the work again that you do and your staff down there at the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. So I think we got to go over to check. Uh, we look like we got four minutes left in the program. So we'll check with Dan. Dan, are there some questions out there that we could uh, possibly answer, the commissioner and myself? Hi, yeah, there are. Um, I'm going to unmute Jerry C. And he is going to talk about access to VA health care. Okay. Welcome, Jerry. Can you hear me now? Yep. I can, Jerry. Go ahead. Were you yeah, muted? No, I'm, I'm good. No. Randy and Larry, Hi, uh, my, my name is Jerry Sertia. I live in Chanhassen. I'm, yep. I'm uh, chairman of the Chanhassen Senior Commission. And one of the projects that we took on last year was trying to find the right way to communicate with the seniors in our community. And since it's difficult to find all seniors directly, I came up with the idea that if we got a hold, if we could communicate with the age-restricted housing communities, we would at least have a microcosm of how they think. And we started that with just the housing managers. Then we decided after we talked to the um, housing managers, we discovered that their communities had large numbers of veterans. So we started including Brett Lyons and Dan Tengwall uh, to come to these monthly meetings so they could listen. And then Brett Lyons and I came up with the idea, say, hey, what if we could go to each of these communities and meet with them and talk to them about what, what's available to them? Because what we discovered is, in, in Chanhassen, as an example, only 25% of the veterans in, Ch in Chanhassen, and there were 1,113 in Chanhassen, are actually registered with the VA. If they're not registered, all these beautiful programs don't mean anything to them. They have to register first. So before COVID, last fall, we did uh, uh, Good Samaritan out in Waconia. We did, uh, in the beginning of this year, we did two other housing communities. And the way we set it up with, to try to get the, the right context, I got up and said, look, in 2007, I was diagnosed with with uh, prostate cancer. The VA wasn't even on my radar till a friend of mine said, hey, Jerry, you were in Vietnam, weren't you? I said, yes, I was. You need to go to the VA and register because that's one of the presumptive diseases that you would get a disability for. And so sure enough, that happened. And then I said, okay, there were 11 presumptive diseases on the list for the VA in 2007. When we did our last presentation, beginning in January this year, and Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, there are over 50 now. And one, you should see their eyes, their eyes get big. They had no idea. And I said, listen, folk, if, and that we tried to have these meetings with their spouses too, so that they understood what, what could happen and what was available. And so the real key to me, the foundational piece, because there's some beautiful work being done way up above, but until they register, they're not gonna get to take advantage of that. And so Brett, Brett and Dan and I are kind of on a mission as soon as COVID lifts and we can get back into these housing to blanket the county and talk to as many of these, these facilities as possible and make sure they've got the info. And Brett, by the way, Dan, I know you know this, but Brett's, Brett's a master in front of a group. 
<laughs> well, he's a chief master sergeant retired, so you ought to be able to handle a group. There you go. Very, thank you so much for what you do in the community. I know I, uh, you know, I, I know of you, and uh, I think we met once or twice. We've been at some veteran things, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, volunteers and people being and caring in the community. That's one of the best ways to help not just veterans, but other folks. So we appreciate that you're you're there and, and doing that. So thanks so much for being on with us tonight or today and sharing your story with us. That's, that's uh, I think it's been very productive for, for us to very listen welcome. to your experience. And outreach is, you're right, and the commissioner can tell you outreach is, is vitally important, especially at the local level. That's the reason why we have Dan and Brett, because they have their skills. So the skills- I would, ask, I would ask you, guys, Larry and Randy, is there anything that you've come up with or thought about that would be able to penetrate the, the population better than we are now without, without grassroots kind of, kind of work? Is there anything that's, that you've seen work at other places that gets the information out there better? My experience has been grassroots outreach uh, and using a network with people like yourself and other veterans, veteran service organizations, and, uh, you know, also you got to have the key people in the community, you know, your, your community leaders. And, uh, and I've seen some outreaches to, to faith organizations also. It's been very productive, you know, and, and we've got several organizations uh, in Carver County and Scott County that are doing the food distribution that's going on right now. Boy, being there is really, and I think Dan's been in a couple of those places to, um, to get exposed to people that we wouldn't normally get exposed to, which are looking, you know, trying to reach veterans. I don't know, Larry, do you have anything new on that uh, outreach piece and connecting with veterans? We sometimes we used to use the term of derogatory Lord. nature, but they're kind of like ghosts out there. It's hard to find them. <laughs> yeah, we're, that's one of my focuses as commissioners to try to, to, to expand our, outreach and our ability to get more of the veterans in. I, I think we have, we probably touch about 40% of the veterans either through federal or state benefits. It's the other 60% that I'm really focused in on and uh, we've, we've worked a lot of different angles on it. Probably the most exciting recently is the getting information from the federal VA on their solid start program, which is uh, those veterans, new veterans that are returning to us to the state of Minnesota and getting a warm handoff is what I'm trying to get uh, from from the federal VA. So that's one of the initiatives that we're working on, along with a lot of other ones. But uh, it is important to get the word out there that that is a critical element, and and getting VA healthcare is a good place to start. Hey, Larry, let me ask you a question. You know, right now the numbers I have show that nationally, only 35 percent of vets are registered with the VA. If that number just even got to 50%. Are there contingency plans in place to, for the VA to be able to handle any dramatic uptick? Uh, what I've heard uh, from Secretary Wilkie is that he welcomes all veterans and actually the better, the more veterans they get involved with VA healthcare, uh, the better it is for them or easier it is for them to get funding and money as it relates to uh, taking care of those veterans. So he said, not a problem. You bring the veterans if they have issues and even if they've been away from VA healthcare most of their life, uh, the time, time to come back is now and, and uh, there's plenty of room under the tent is I think is the exact quote that he used and, and the money will be there. And he said, there's no problem with taking care of the veterans. Awesome. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll turn in here too. Um, Commissioner Herkey, if you have any money laying around, we could, we could clone people like Jerry, possibly better looking. But hey. People like Jerry who can go around and, and get to people. That is so needed. Someone that has gone through the process themselves and can walk their fellow veteran through that process. They can help them get to the VA, access the VA. So important. So thank you, Jerry. Yeah, We're running out of time, Dan, I think. Is that right? We're a little over? Yeah, we are going to want to close up here. Um, uh, you know, the thing is, guys, uh, there is a, an event coming up next month. Um, it is going to be similar to this, and it's called the E2020. And so I'm going to put that information out right now. Um, if th this 
talk was designed to kind of just get you into the headspace of veterans benefits. The E2020 coming up is going to be on October, I believe it's 29. Say again? October 29. Yep, October 29. Um, and if you want more information on that, do you have that email, or I'm sorry, that website, Commissioner Maluchnik? I do, Dan. It's uh, mnme.us. So for you military folks, it's Mike November, Mike Echo. U, dot us so mike november mike echo dot us i think that uh, will get you, we gotta get there that will get you it's up there the, now uh that will get you to the registration field and there are going to be over 50 classes that cover different areas all of them will be recorded like this one but each one will go into more depth like veterans homelessness like getting veterans jobs like using VA healthcare, et cetera. So it's a really exciting thing coming up on October 29th. Commissioner. Okay, great, thank you for that, Dan. Yep, I'll hand it over to you to close out, sir. Thank you very much, Dan. Commissioner Herkey, we wanna thank you for your time. Uh, thank you all in the audience for your engagement. We'll be working on a way to rebroadcast this interview so people can view it later on. Until then, I want to say thank you to the veterans and our military families for their service. Your sacrifices are important and must be acknowledged daily. I want all of you to take care of yourselves and each other and to uh, please, if you have the opportunity, to thank a veteran or his family for their service to our nation. Thank you, Randy, Larry, and Dan. Welcome, Jerry.